So today's short story is about a woman, Nora, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and she's undergoing surgery. And you will hear viewpoints from various people in her lives and enjoy. Okay, now let me think all the things I'm not supposed to think. Well, I still am right here and still have some time. Hell, these seats are uncomfortable. Comfy at first, but after an hour, the old back is killing me. Killing. I can't think that word these days without feeling guilty. Like I have no right. Like I'm a dreadful, selfish person to bitch about my back at a time like this. But that doesn't stop it from hurting. And nothing hurts like your own physical pain. Like last Sunday, when I slammed into first on that hard hit grounder, really made contact. Who would expect it to be scooped up clean? In front of a goddamn crowd, too. Nothing hurts like your own pain. That's the truth. Your own body, aching. Now, I'm trying not to, thinking anything I can, but I keep coming back to that morning at her place, way before we got married. Nora would kill me for remembering now. Kill, that word again. But yes, that morning, I was lying in her bed, and she comes waltzing out of her bedroom in a skirt with nothing on top. I've never known a woman so unembarrassed about her body. She didn't look at me sprawled out on her bed, around the, she, but she was looking for something in the room for something she needed. Clothing we tossed away the night before, probably. I mean, it was so weird. Like she was dressing alone, not in front of a man who had just slept in her bed for the first time the night before. She was so unselfconscious. All day at work, I kept seeing her strolling out of the bathroom. No, not her, to be honest, now while I still can, but her breasts. The nakedness of her breasts was so powerful, I think because of the everyday skirt she wore. She even had on shoes. Odd, I suppose, a woman wearing a skirt and shoes with little heels while completely topless. It wasn't funny, though. It wasn't just sexy, either. It was intimate like I was spying on her alone in her room, the Nora she'd never let anyone see. There's honesty in a moment like that. I can see her now, her body, and now, of course, her breasts, so outrageously frank before me. That's what they were, frank. What's more frank, more open and honest than a bare-breasted woman? What was Mitch's joke at the game? A naked woman is nature's way of saying, hello. <laughs> After she was diagnosed, she stood before that mirror, stroking herself. I'll never forget now, in a mindless way, stroking and staring into space. How different will she be, my Nora, my darling wife, who liked me to play games with fingers on her body while we watched videos, who liked knowing that I lusted for her. It always surprised me how much that meant. This can't be happening. I know she's my friend's wife, but I have proof. That night at their place in the Cape, when Nora and I stayed up after Jack and Susan hit the sack, we talked till three about novels and poetry things that Sue gets bored with in about two seconds. And you can bet Nora can't talk to Jack about it all. She was wearing one of her flimsy tops, dark blue, like the ocean that pounded the beach outside. I was so carried away by that sexual aura she had. It was a kind of ripeness, like she's ready to be plucked or she'll start to spoil. That as we said good night, I did something I'd never done in 18 years of marriage. 
I tried to kiss a woman other than my wife. She dodged my lips and gave me a bear hug, a woman's way of giving you less. Though from a man's point of view, it gives you more. On my chest, I felt that part of her I had admired for years and had glimpsed all night when her blouse gave me a peek. Those wild early days before we and the rest of the world had kids. I think we should say goodnight, Tom, she said, and went into her room where Jack was already sleeping. I could hear the big lug snoring away. I went into my room and crawled in next to Susan. I pulled her close. She was always a sound sleeper and pretended she was Nora. Nora Gleason presented with a class two carcinoma. Her primary physician made the diagnosis of ductal carcinoma following a fine needle aspiration biopsy performed under local anesthetic. The patient hoped that a breast conserving surgery such as a lumpectomy or a septal mastectomy would be sufficient to treat her condition. I told her we would perform the least invasive procedure required to remove her cancer. We'd start with a lumpectomy and test some of the surrounding tissue while we, she was still on the table. If the test showed that the carcinoma was encapsulated and the surrounding tissue was free of cancer cells, we'll stop right there with probably a course of radiation and a round of chemo. However, if we find that the carcinoma invaded the surrounding tissue or metastasized to the lymphatic system, we will need to do a mastectomy and auxiliary lymph node dissection. I explained that to be safe, we'll need to remove all the breast tissue and underlying muscle, including the tissue and lymph nodes under her arm. We would also follow this procedure with radiation at least one round of chemo. We won't know what the procedure to do until we get inside and see what we've got. Since she'll be under a general anesthetic, I explained, we'll want to perform the necessary procedure while we're in there. She should be prepared for either treatment. When she wakes up afterward, we'll explain what procedure was required depending on the metastasis of the carcinoma. Then if necessary, we'll discuss our options for reconstruction. After explaining all this, I asked her to sign the consent form for the procedure. The procedure. It's a procedure. And then there was the afternoon we all went swimming at the Cape, and she actually said, what are you staring at? As she stood before the blanket, toweling off. I was staring at her boobs, of course, dreaming myself into the dripping wet fibers of her bathing suit. That way the water turns bathing suits dark and heavy, as if the ocean came back with her because it couldn't give up the feel of a sexy woman's body. I remember a drop of ice cold seawater dripping on my bare thigh that was hot from the sun, a frigid ice pick on my burning skin. <coughs> Nothing, I said, and she gave me a knowing grin. It was definitely a knowing grin. It said, I know you're mentally undressing me, and that's why I'm going to stand here in front of you, shaking water out of my hair so hard that my tits nearly flop out of this waterlogged suit. Go ahead, imagine me standing here naked, just for you. I knew the first place I would kiss Nora if I ever made love to her. And what's crazy is I swear she knew it too. When I told Nora Gleason that the tests confirmed what we learned from the biopsy, she followed the pattern of accepting the information matter-of-factly, as if she had known all along, then crying when her husband asked a bunch of very rational questions. I've been examining women for two decades, and it's never awkward for them. They have a switch about physical things to separate their minds from their bodies when they have to. Maybe that's why they don't fear doctors and checkups the way men do. Women say they don't understand and ask me to define something I should have said in simpler language. I can never get the language simple enough. Poor Jack Gleason, he was more stunned than most. You want to know what awkward is? I'll tell you what awkward is. When Jack Gleason tried to say why they chose me to treat his wife, he said, 
I know you're one of the biggest breast men in the country. Then he realized it was his wife's breast we were talking about, not what a terrific pair some passing woman had, that there was a suspicious lump that may have metastasized to the lymphatic system, which could mean one or both breasts had to be surgically removed. It would be so much easier to talk about a lung or a pancreas or a colon. <coughs> no one but us doctors know what they look like. And if you've seen one, which I have, they don't look like very much. And they have no meaning to people other than some vague organ that does something. Other cancers can be more aggressive, each its own nightmare. But this one is a special kind of nightmare. You could see by the, by the way Jack kept pointing to the x-ray and asking one question after another. Nora drifted into her own world, that same inner world women slip into when they're being touched by a doctor in a way they wish they didn't ever have to be touched by anyone. Her nipples had tiny wrinkles, a, a perfect circle blushed deep red, light pink on the outer edge, the areola, I think it's called. Years later, I'd see them grow fat and plump, nearly purple when she nurse Kyle and Sasha, home with the babysitter now, not knowing what's happening to their mother. I think I loved her breasts more than any other part of her. They were her. Is that too horrible to say? To imagine that because I can visualize them so vividly, they will always be there for me? I know I'm being selfish, I admit it, but I can't help it. <coughs> I think I'll give that babe Nora a call. Nora, the one with the tits. Or maybe I'll hang around the park when her idiot husband plays his dumbass softball game and see if I can stir something up. Always dug the way she cruised around my place half naked. She's built like a brick shit house, and the lady knows it. I picked it up immediately and made a big deal about it. She stared at me all googly-eyed when I told her how beautiful her breasts were. I wasn't exaggerating. I honestly appreciate women's bodies more than most men. The trick is to keep telling them how you love their bodies. You can't do it too much. Take it from me. I talked to her at length about her breasts, how they each had their own personality, and her nipples. Women's nipples vary more than any other part of them, so it's very easy to find things to say. It's been over a year, and I was going over my mental list this time around when her name came up. Her knockers came up, actually, and I want to get my hands on them again. I can get quite poetic about a woman with a fantastic rack. Yeah, me, a goddamn poet. You can't blame yourself for getting cancer, but I think Nora does. I know that she thinks she's being punished for that thing with Mitch. Yeah, Mitch, that was the creep's name. There we were, two women walking along, talking a mile a minute about our kids, when suddenly she tells me about a time in his apartment when he wanted her to take her T-shirt off. Sounds exciting, I said, since given my life, it was pretty exciting. She said it was pathetic. That's the word she used. Pathetic. That she was pathetic for letting it happen. The funny thing is she doesn't shy away from flaunting what she's got. I can't believe she had the nerve, although those skimpy t-shirts she wears don't help, or they help a lot, depending on your point of view. On our walks, the men look at her, not at me. I asked Tom, and he said, he never noticed, although he admitted that they were flirting that summer at the Cape. I know Nora was feeling down, that Jack was out to lunch half the time back then. If anyone was begging his wife to have a fling, Jack was. But I'm the only one who knows that she actually did it. I really love that phase, did it, the big it, that everyone understands, even though there were a million things that it could be. But it never is. It is always it. And I'm the only one that knows that Nora did it with Mitch and how guilty it made her feel. Poor Nora. Who could think that of all of my friends, she'd be the one in nine? 
in the magazines in the waiting room, breasts. Even in the oncologist's office, a breast man, whose office is in a building called the Breast Center. That's what the sign in front says. I'm not kidding. In big, goofy, kind of gouged out letters, next to a sculpture of a woman dancing, like she's happy to be there, as if just being there isn't unreal enough. And then the waiting rooms filled with magazines. A thousand breasts shouting, look at me, don't I look sexy? When I came here with Nora the first time, I didn't notice. But I'm noticing now how the world is filled with breasts, cleavage everywhere, magazines, TV billboards, movies, every place you look. I never noticed before. No, to be honest, I always noticed. <laughs> how many big boob jokes have the guys made on, on Sunday softball games? It's just, it's different now. I can't believe how much my world has changed. I'm not sure I can go on. I, I mean, I kind of liked it the old way. So, old Mrs. Gleason's in the hospital, my mom says. Just my luck. I'll end up doing work around her house without her being there, which I am so totally not into. And every time she pays me, I can't even count the bills. When she stands close, I totally lose it, staring at this old lady who's so hot, she turns me on even more than Tara Feingold. I mean, Mrs. Gleason, like, chills in her yard in this t-shirt, and I can see through everything. I mean, everything, and I'm trying to mow the lawn. She's a smoke show at 10. I'm supposed to be all bummed about it, but Tonight, I'll lie in bed and get into this fantasy, how she's gonna ask me over while we're chilling in the house and her, her dude Jack the Jock was out playing softball. She'll shove those awesome bongos in my face and ask if I want to touch them. She'll rub them around, and I'm lucky if I remember to bring the tissues into bed as she pleads for more. Totally awesome titties in my face. Mrs. Gleason, are you hot or what? People were watching TV when I got back to the waiting room. I swear to you, everything on TV is a 50-foot neon billboard for breasts. Every female character, every outfit, every place you look. Am I obsessed now because of what might happen? Because Nora is under? Dreaming? Do you dream under general anesthetic? Another question I forgot to ask Dr. Gelman. I don't know how women survive in this world. I honestly don't. When I saw the sign saying the breast center, I thought, what does this place with oncologists and x-ray machines and survival rates have to do with breasts? But of course it does. I shouldn't even be thinking about her breasts when it might very well be worse. I should be thinking about her life. Of course, I know that. Now, I let myself think the evil, hateful thought the absolute most disgusting thing any man in history could think at a time like this. To reach over in bed and touch a flat, breastless chest. What would that be like? Am I strong enough to deal with it? Okay, go ahead. Hate me. I haven't thought of Nora Schindel in years, but all of a sudden I hear this Beatles tune in the supermarket of all places. And I'm back on that orange couch in her basement where we made out. I want to hold your hand, and yes, I held her hand in other parts of her, as we listened to a new British group called the Beatles. <clears throat> they had invaded America, everyone was saying, but more important to me was that I invaded the secret parts of this new girlfriend I had, named Nora Schindel. I negotiated her allowing me to take off her bra, and it was the first time I touched a bare breast, that sacred mound of flesh. This is a religious experience for a teenage boy, more intense than any religious experience would ever be. I don't think I ever felt as much heat between myself and a woman as those contorted encounters on that orange couch, worrying that her father would come stomping down. I remember how her skin felt. Now, she didn't mind me seeing her with nothing on top. Other women, even the one I'm married to, for instance, have inhibitions about how they look. But not Nora. 
not even then, when we were just kids. We never went beyond petting, and I've been married twice and had more than a few girlfriends, but I've never felt as excited as I did making out with Nora Shindell on her basement couch. I get excited even now remembering how my hand slid up her stomach under her shirt to cup her breast. I'll never feel lust for anyone like I did for Nora. No one will ever have breasts like that. Ah, Nora, I'll never forget the pleasure you gave me. I wonder where in the world you are now. Jack wouldn't understand. I know. I tried to tell him when Nora was diagnosed. But I'll say this to any man who knows a woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer, who aside from knowing she might die, also knows she may wake up to find one or both breasts gone. No, it's too upsetting. I can't go into it. I mean, Jack told me Nora was afraid of waking up and just finding bandages. That's all she said. Just finding bandages. No one had to ask what she meant. As usual, he was cut off, incapable of understanding what his lovely wife was going through. That's Jack for you. Yeah, so I tell Nora, I want to pull, pull that shirt off you right now, babe, as she parades around my place in a t-shirt with nothing underneath. What a pair of drugs on that woman. Very well endowed. Very, very healthy. Haven't seen her around lately. But her doofus husband was playing softball last Sunday. That's probably what made me think of her. I never saw him hit the ball so hard and run so fast. The stupid moron almost killed himself, running for first, even though he was already out by a mile. Another husband just called me a breast man. And in the awkward silence that followed, I thought how eerie it was. Cancer in a part of the body everyone sees the outline of every day. Breast cancer. It's the worst two words a woman can hear one after the other. There's no phrase in which the second word so alters the meaning of the first. And it's what I do, it's my career, and I work very hard to get here. People seek me out, track me down, like the Gleasons did, when they learn that those two words are touching in a part of a woman's body the world sees as defining who and what she is. After trying to talk to Jack and giving up, I imagined again how it would feel for a woman to face what Nora is facing. I mean, aside from nursing, which you don't have to do, breasts don't really do anything. I remembered how once, years ago, fooling around with a girlfriend, I tucked my penis behind me so all she could see was pubic hair. It's amazing the gut reaction it brought out in both of us even though we of course knew I'm a man and the whole thing was a joke. I say this to a man, do that and look down. It'll disturb you in a way I can't describe. And remember, despite what everyone says, women are judged by their looks and men sort of are, but finally aren't. Tom is a really good friend to sit here with me when Nora wakes up, but I'd rather know that the kids are covered. He had a lot of very solid advice about taking care of Nora, whatever happens. And whatever happens is happening now. I am so, so tired. At last, Nora becomes conscious. She's still underwater and fights to the surface. In the sunlight, she can't yet reach. She can make out Jack, sleeping like a baby, reminding her of long nights nursing Kyle and Sasha 
and of Jack caressing her as they watched a video, before almost remembering the thing she is supposed to remember. She cheers silently. She still cannot breathe. And she has awakened as herself. Yes, that was her big fear. Not that she wouldn't wake, but that she wouldn't wake as herself. And with an explosion of joy, a gasp of air after too long under, Nora discovers that she is still herself, despite the huge things she is supposed to remember. So huge it can wipe her out, the way a tidal wave wipes out a tiny seaside village. As she breaks through the surface, a voice inside her shouts in triumph before the wave hits and settles the matter once and for all. I am me. I am still me.